Hello everyone. In this video, I shall try to give you some more information about the novel Basti written by Intezar Hussain. I have been getting so many requests for this video, but I don't think uh, my video will be suffice for you. So here again, I am requesting you to go through the book, read the book line by line and have your own opinion, have your own perspective. Okay, do not rely on external source sources. You can read other sources, but it should not be your ultimate uh, goal. Okay, you must read the text, have your own opinion. Whatever, uh, here I would like to give you some uh, detail about the uh, novel. Okay, so let's begin it. We all know Basti, uh, it is a partisan novel of India and Pakistan both. As the writer, he migrated to Pakistan after the partition. And it was first published in 1979, and then it was translated into English. So it was first written originally in Urdu, I'm, if I'm not wrong. Then uh, later it became a super duper uh, hit, means among literary lovers. And uh, this work is also attributed to Muhammad Hassan Askari. Uh, Indazar Hussain, he is also a novelist, columnist, fiction writer, translator, playwright, critic, commentator, biographer, travel writer, journalist, editor, children's literary, uh, children's authors, children's author. Okay. So that's it about the biography and my introduction about this novel. But now let's dive in into the uh, detail of the novel. Uh, we all know the protagonist of this novel is Jakir, right? Uh, this story of Basti it follows the shattered man as he recounts his recollections of youth and his early life. And in this narrative, a young professor of history named Jakir, he tells us the story of his past through his memories from partisan to uh, Bangladesh liberation war. The main theme of this short story is waiting for war and partisan. When you are waiting for war and partisan, how, how it feels. Uh, that kind of feeling the poet has tried to point and the uh, depict. And Jakir, the protagonist of this tale, he has moved from India to Pakistan during, not during, uh, after the partition in 1947 and while leaving behind his love. Means when he left India at the time, he must have been in love with some someone from India and he had to leave her due to this imminent partisan. Okay. And a novel, this is also a novel about North Indian Muslims who have lost their homes and communities due to this partisan. Although the novel has many characters, the main characters are Jakir, Sabra, and Afzal. Okay. Then uh, in, the, in the novel Basti, the author has also poignantly delineated the tragedy of migration very well in a situationist tale about Pakistan. Through this story, he has also tried to express all the anguish and sorrow that he feels. And the novel is the romance of the writer's childhood. And this novel has been divided uh, into 11 parts. And it's different part. Uh, it depicts the author's childhood, his struggle, his thoughts about partisan by the plot. And uh, the story, it was published in 1979 and it was set in a city in Pakistan, presumably Lahore. And its time was the last few months of 1971 preceding, means when uh, India, uh, sorry, when Pakistan and Bangladesh, they were struggling to get independence. Means uh, Bangladesh was ac actually fighting the war for their liberation. And later, at the, when it was about to uh, uh, end, means not end, means when people were very furious that they no longer wanted to be with the Pakistan. At that time, India had en entered and they had uh, helped them to be li liberated. And uh, it has also uh, depicted how Dhaka was uh, gone from Pakistan. We all know Pakistan uh, means Bangladesh was a part of Pakistan after the partition. And part, uh, at, at, at that time, it was known as, if I'm not wrong, West Pakistan, right? And uh, West or East, I'm not sure, maybe West, uh, you have to do your own research. And But that Bengal is known as uh, East Bengal at the time. Maybe then if it is called East Bengal, then it may be called as East Pakistan too, but I'm not sure. You have to check it out. So uh, that how Bangladesh was liberated, how uh, Dhaka was gone from Pakistan's hand. So that thing the writer has tried to depict. Though they were same religion followers, despite that how they had tried to be separated. So that pain the writer has tried to depict. And uh, the protagonist of this novel, Jakir, uh, he is the professor of history. And he originally uh, belonged to a small town tucked away somewhere in the mythic landscape of Eastern Uttar Pradesh, India. 
And Jakir, along with his parents, he moved to Pakistan in 1947, leaving behind not just an idyllic childhood, but also his childhood sweetheart, Sabira. So his childhood sweetheart name was Sabira. Okay? And she was a cousin of his. And Sabira never came to Pakistan, though uh, it was announced by the authority at the time that uh, Muslim, uh, one who wanted to leave India, uh, could go to Pakistan. But despite that, uh, Sabira's family might have not left. So that thing the writer has tried to depict here that Sabira uh, never came to Pakistan even when life was threatened in India. Uh, and her own immediate relatives emigrated to what was then East Pakistan. Yes, I am wrong. I was wrong. Uh, so that was not uh, West Pakistan. So that was East Pakistan. And she never married. So they were in love before the partition and when he left, when the protagonist left uh, for Pakistan at that time too they were in love that's why that uh, may be one of the reasons why she had never got ma married and Jakir too he too didn't uh, get married so that may be a part of true love who knows right and he was in love with Sabira that I already told you but he he, ha he had always lacked the will to either call or fetch her from India though he loved though, though he uh, knew that Sab Sabira was in India but despite that he ne never tried to call and fetch her due to his maybe lack of confidence, lack of his esteem, right? And more importantly, his entire cultural personality, it uh, extended back into a millennium and a half of Muslim history, and it was recalled through skillfully deployed flashbacks. Being a professor of history, Zakir was aware, perhaps he all too well aware of the course of Muslim history in the sub subcontinent. And being a uh, city, he, site or city, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, he is. He was also aware of the course of this history beyond India in the mainlands of Islam. So this history had been one of the constant uh, feuds among Muslims for political dom dominance. In fact, for Jakir, it was the advent of scheming Umayyads on Islam's political horizon in 661 CE that inaugurated an interminable era of decision, uh, dissension, strife, and hatred. And the writer has also... Uh, drawn the references to Muslim South Asian history throughout the novel, the 1857 War of Independence from the British Raj, the creation of Pakistan in 1947, and the 1965 war between India and Pakistan, and finally the 1971 political disintegration of Pakistan with the emergence of Bangladesh as a sovereign nation. And the novel ends with this last event. And firstly, it did not uh, replicate it, or it did not replicate familiar reality, even otherwise it uh, concrete, concrete it also appeared swathed in an airy half light. They hovered at the age of consciousness, recognized not so much by their physical attributes as by their effect on Jackie. Characters to appear shown of physical traits and particular details. So here, many things are depicted by the writer. I will not read the whole thing. Okay, so here. Jakir, he is the central character of the novel. He sees himself and his world as he recultural uh, as he recultures the continuum and he experiences moments of South Asian Muslim history going back to the turmoil of 1857, the mutiny, the British still call it, and that all thing, right? And let me discuss other topics. Hmm. Here. The protagonist of the story is a biographical self, uh, self insert of. Hussein, like the author himself, the narrator Zakir, he spent his childhood within a pluralistic culture in Rupnagar. Rupnagar was an idle society, a place where the people had not lost their innocence yet. It, is, it was a geographical space formed with love, sacrifice, and understanding. Basti was an uh, Urdu language word which has a number of meanings from dwellings, village, right, to uh, a settlement. However, in its literal sense, it refers to a small place where different groups of people live together. Accordingly, the title of the book suggests the human settlement enriched with the feeling of home. So Basti here refers to the village Rupnagar, which is a multi-ethnic space, accommodating dating anyone and everyone. So the recurrent images of home in his fiction, it indicates nostalgia for the homeland, primarily nostalgia for his lost basti. Jakir's nostalgia for Rupnagar, it intensifies homeland, primarily nostalgia for his lost basti, uh, when he encounters the chaos and destruction in the wake of the partition. Uh, unsurprisingly, when a dislocated person uh, wrote the canvas was not confined, they possessed a variety of unique experiences to write about. Thus, the resultant text was studied within a multi- Multi multi tiered metrics. Hussein's busty, it lacked like fixity and suggested a momentous engagement with a variety of locations between the past and the present. Okay, the narrative, it cannot be categorized under one convenient level. Divided into 11 chapters, the novel foregrounded the coexistence of the present with the mythic past. A few of its sections reflected Hindu Muslim unity in the pre partisan era or days, whereas others depicted the horrors of partisan when the riot, riots began. 
In this way, the structure of the novel itself became a motif of loss and displacement, lacking linearity and chronological order. And it has also drawn upon the War of 1857, the War of 1965 between India and Pakistan, partition of 1947, and finally the 1971 division of East Pakistan and West Pakistan. Quite clearly, the plot of Bush, it deals uh, it deals with a vast range of experiences with the trauma of this location as a common factor. The narrative is set in Lahore and so on. However, flashbacks reveal Jackie's recollection of his uh, childhood and adolescence in Rupnagar in uh, Bihaspur, respectively. The narrative it opens with Jackie's reminiscence of his childhood in Rupnagar in in pre-partition. India, when the world was still all new, when the sky was fresh and the art not yet soil, when trees breathed through the centuries and ages spoke in the voices of birds. So these uh, were the lively images of new world, fresh sky, unsoiled earth, breeding trees and voices of birds were uh, associated with Zakir's pristine pre-partisan Indian days. Hindu and Muslim of Rupnagar, they confronted the plague, deaths of their loved ones and brave uh, many storms together. Uh, so here the writer has tried to depict how Hindu and Muslim were li living peacefully and together we, we, without any kind of uh, disturbance in his own village, Rupnagar. But due to political gain, due to administrative chaosness and British policy, they had to leave their own home. They, they had to uh, kill own neighbor, Hindu and Muslim. So that pain the writer has tried to portray. So here, another thing is mentioned. The Muslims faced this massive migration for a greater purpose. They failed to re resume their old lives and were left traumatized. These dust expectations of the immigrants, uh, it gave birth to a sense of loss and rootlessness, and they became nostalgic of their past. So one who left India and went to Pakistan. So they they had never uh, forgotten their root uh, till that. So that thing also the writer is right to dab it. In mo most of the families that migrated to Pakistan, one elderly was left behind for the sake of their an ancestral land. And so many people were there who didn't want to leave India. Though Pakistan uh, was about to be formed in the name of Muslim religion, Islamic religion. But despite that, some people, they did not want to leave because they had been there since birth and uh, they they that that land, that basti, that, uh, that all locality, it, it belonged to to what you call it, their and ancestors. That's why they didn't want to uh, leave. So that thing also the writer has tried to do. The uh, de decision of partition will be taken by someone else and su and the sufferer will be someone else. The thing. And for him, the loss of his land and his home was an irretrievable one. If uh, It signifies the importance of the shroud and the grave in the life of Muslim, as Zakir Amizan was more worried about her death than the problems of life. Despite the fact that migrants could claim more land in Pakistan than what they possess in India, people like Hakimji, they prefer to stay back to be buried in his native land. And he states his re reason this way, Hakimji, you didn't go to Pakistan, no, no young man. And the reason, young man, you ask for the reason. Have you seen, your, uh, seen our grave graveyard? No, just go sometime and take a look. Each tree is live here than the next. How could my grave have such said in Pakistan? Hussein has also recorded the memories of Hindu and Sikh immigrants from Samnagar. There too, a number of big houses were left empty, while a few also stayed locked. People locked their houses carefully in hopes of returning some someday. So you can see the pain of partition, right? Edward said in his introduction to reflection of exile and other essay states, exiles, emigres, emigres, refugees, and ex expatriates are expatriates are uprooted from their lands, and even after they adjust themselves to new surroundings, sadness still remains in their chronicles. So it is a fact. When you, you will leave uh, your place, you will not be able to forget that, that place where you were born. So that thing, okay? Okay, and there are many more. Uh, if you want this PDF or other study material, you can uh, send a WhatsApp text, okay? Mm, that's it. I don't want to read this whole thing. And very hot today, so I'm literally boiling. So I don't want to uh, shout more. Thank, thank you so much for watching this video, and please read the whole whole text. Okay, uh, thank you.